Ready? I'm ready. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Let's start this live timing. off with a beautiful sneeze from this sweet lady. All right, folks, we are back. It's been a minute. And uh, previously to this, if you got the opportunity to, we had a guest. And uh, Miss Cat was not here. Um, Nikolai from Norway was here. He's back home in the great country of I'm Norway. Norway. <laughs> I, was, I almost said state. The great state of Norway. Um, he's in the, the great country of Norway, back to training in the, um, essentially Arctic. He's been sending video updates of his training, snow everywhere, piles of snow everywhere. It's cold, but he does at least have daylight ish again. I saw some, uh, glimpses of what looked like potentially daylight. So he's got that to look forward to. Um, this week, we have a, a few cool things, announcements to talk about, as we hinted in the title and description, um, social media, Pheasant Fest, and South Texas hunting. Um, some cool things. Let's start quick here with uh, check-ins. You can run that there, babe. Maybe. That's because you can't read the screen, so I get oh, to. Thanks for calling me out on it. Hello from California, <coughs> Spruce Pine, North Carolina, Wisconsin, Western Kentucky. Hey, Angelo. Oh, oh it does that glitchy, jumpy thing. Do, 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 do. That's what Stony she said. Stony Creek, New York. We know where you're from, Angelo. You can't hide from us. Mm -hmm. From Atlanta, California. Hey, Melanie, Duncan, and Sully. Thanks for calling us out on the uh, misprint of the day for this. Yes. Live chat. Yes. <laughs> uh, Oops, we, typo. we all screwed. That was a three way missed here. Okay. Yeah. It was Bad approved. Deal. It was approved by me and Ethan after it had been typed up and uh, we missed it. So thanks for the thing. Thanks for the edit. <laughs> we appreciate it. New Hampshire, California, we've got, bless you, thank you. It was like, literally, he's like, ready to go live? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. He pushes the live button. I had to sneeze. Uh, Mark <laughs> from New York, we'll be seeing you soon, so you can pick up Sierra. New Jersey, South Carolina checking in. Loveland, Colorado, whoop. Southern Wisconsin, another uh, high point, North Carolina. Tallahassee, Florida, that name Tallahassee just looks cool Virginia Madison Wisconsin Minnesota oh Rush City Minnesota Buckyrus Ohio I'm probably butchered that one Severance Colorado Newburgh Oregon New York Colorado Michigan Ohio we got some questions rolling in. Hello from Oklahoma. So if you are new to our live streams and our bird dog chats, we want to just mention that we typically do some check-ins, kind of some updates, maybe talk about a topic or so, and then we roll right into answering people's questions about halfway through. Um, people that have a question just burning a hole in their pocket, put those up with a super chat and we'll get to you and give you priority, but otherwise we roll into questions um, so don't think we are ignoring you, okay? We just try and keep a flow going and keep things keep things interesting and moving. Uh, so I would say first and foremost, we want to say thank you to patrons. For those of you that don't know what we mean, um, people that are signed up at patreon.com slash standing stone kennels already have access to our bird dog bingo cards that was just posted here a few minutes before the live. And this evening, you get the opportunity to win... One of these sexy, cover your face, sexy uh, standing stone born to hunt Yeti official mugs, tumblers. They're really cool. 20 ounce tumblers, really freaking cool in the beautiful charcoal color that will be shipped out to you. Ooh, we've got an adjustment in there. Charlotte, Texas, speaking of Charlotte, Texas, but... We'll we be getting to, say, to you, Charles, later. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, wanted to say thank you to patrons. Um, they are the number one supporter of everything Standing Stone. So, 
Um, if you are a fan and have ever watched a video or enjoyed a podcast. post or podcast or live chat, all of that is primarily supported, uh, ma- majorly, ma- ma- majorly, majorly, ma- what is the word? Majoritively? Merch, merch, merch. Um, <clears throat> the number one supporter of that is The patrons. number one <laughs> supporter is Patreon. Uh uh, patrons, excuse me, specifically. Um, patrons are not only supporting the channel, but also benefiting from their membership, okay? There's a few different tiers. The bottom, you've got just essentially a tip jar, buying us a drink on podcast night. It's $5 a month. And we, you get a bird dog bingo card. And you get access for a chance to win, okay? The next up are all going to be self-help tiers from asking questions on the daily, things that are simple, All the way up to, but not limited with, but But limited limited to, to. (laughs) Uh, weekly check-ins with a video chat. Either Kat or I um, are going to have the opportunity to touch base with you, watching training sessions, or just sitting down and kind of working through a plan, talking through what happened in the last week and what that looks like. We're pushing some updates. If you don't know, we have an online training course. Takes you from eight weeks to 12 months, essentially um, a step-by-step program, if you will, with weekly uh, kind of expectations, as well as a checklist on are you ready to move on or not, and a sample week kind of giving you an idea or a layout of what you could be doing every day with your brand new puppy. So that is available you can click on courses at standingstonekennels.com or standingstonesupply.com. Basically, any place you find us, you can find the course and um, support to that. Or what is the word I'm thinking of? You can uh, still do check-ins, consults with us there. Um, they're at a discounted rate if you've bought the course. And something that Ethan mentioned was it's from 8 weeks to 12 months, but that doesn't have to be like – a set in stone thing. If your puppy's 10 weeks old, it doesn't mean, oh, well, I missed the boat. I can't train my puppy now. Um, no, you would just kind of play a little bit of catch up. You would check in with the checklist and see where you're at. And then you would end up getting to where your puppy's at and you would continue moving forward from there. Um, what would it be? It would be, a, it would be complimentary. So Patreon tiers would be complimentary to the course in the sense of having the additional support if you're not following the conversation for sure it opens up the dialogue so that you can follow along with the course ask a few questions here and there make sure you're on the right track any clarifications you need and then still absolutely signing up for those consults so the biggest thing being i didn't cut you off (laughs) no i just was on pause so the biggest thing to say though is if you are following along and your dog doesn't follow exactly as you are seeing it happen You've got the ability to reach out via one-off calls or the subscription on Patreon. Now, somebody asked here about a link. No, 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 no. It's already pinned to oh, the top. Oh, dang. It's already pinned to the top. Patreon.com slash Standing Stone Kennels. It's a social platform, essentially, that is specific to us and our ability to help you. So... All of that being said, it's old news to a lot of folks here. If you have more questions, don't hesitate to ask. And uh, we want to kind of move on to, speaking of social platforms. I just wanted to throw one more little thing out about Patreon because we just started this upgrade. <laughs> Up, update, update. There we go. <clears throat> yeah, update. We are going to have a t-shirt of the quarter club. So Patreon doesn't let you have a t-shirt of the month club, wah, 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 but it allows us to have a t-shirt of the quarter club, which Absolutely. allows us to put together a really cool, unique Standing Stone patron t-shirt and you can get one quarterly and it'll be different. It's not like, oh, you get the same t-shirt every quarter. Um, it'll be different every quarter. So that's something new that we're going to be rolling out. We're finalizing that new tier here, um, hopefully this evening after... We get off the live chat with you all. Um, For the people just bopping in, this is the giveaway this evening. This is the sexy standing stone Yeti cup in charcoal. Yeah, you're fine. Your face is beautiful. Mm. Don't block it. 
Um, but that cup would be the giveaway. So you have to, it's pinned at the top, talks to how to get a bingo card, get one sooner rather than later because it's about the things that we do and you have to be able to check them off. We'll review it at the end when somebody says, bingo. Bingo. All right. Social Next, platforms. talking about social platforms. Yes, absolutely. A uh, really big milestone for us happened just this week, thanks to everyone here. Um, one hundred. I almost said one thousand. One hundred thousand followers on Instagram, guys. On Instagram. That is insane. <clears throat> absolutely insane, and um, it just exploded. It, Very recently, it like yeah. it just blew up where starting back uh, the end of September is when we started to see really big growth. Uh, we, we appreciate it. all we want to say there is that we appreciate the support. We appreciate y'all. Um, this is so that you guys got to understand we have social platforms to build um, recognition and viewership and basically reach, if you will, would be an industry based term to to touch more lives our goal is to help people learn how to train dogs which is why we provide and started with providing all of our dog training videos and everything else available on youtube for free and still to this day everybody says uh your content's too good put that behind a paywall okay it's not our goal um our goal is to help people uh, to live with their dogs and be happy with the dogs and be able to train them and have the information that they need in order to be able to train them. Now, granted, we have paywalls, okay? That's for additional stuff. We can't give everything away for free and have a business and be able to pay our own bills. But um, providing dog training videos so that you have a step, and if you can follow along with those, fantastic. If you need additional help, that's where we have resources. We have a course that gives you the guide kind of through the process. And then we have Patreon, which we just about talked about, that gives you the additional support to kind of help navigate all of the other resources available. So um, all of that being said, we are pumped, uh, to say the least, about the fact that we have grown to a 100,000 is a huge milestone. We hit that um, earlier this year, beginning late, late last year on YouTube. And we are r knocking at 200,000's door. We got a little ways to go yeah, yet, but... Yeah, we're, we're a little ways from well, knocking. When you look at the, the growth category, it isn't going to take that much longer. It, we're getting close, Ten folks. months. Ten no. months based on our growth. Nah, come on now. Hey, if we Math. can hit 200,000 before the end of 2023, It'll you'll happen. have proved Ethan right and me wrong. And Guaranteed. I'm not wrong very often, so I'd love it if I was wrong. You're wrong more often than you admit. It's some some part of it's about admitting, um, admitting when you're wrong. I mean, just. But it doesn't happen often, so <laughs> it doesn't have to be this admitted. Is, honestly, this is true. You're really bad admitting that you're wrong because you're rarely wrong. So. And I don't stick to my guns if I am doubtful of my right or wrongness. I'm like. Mm. Uh, I don't know. You want to talk about that? When was the last time that you that you accepted a bet from me? I don't know. It's yeah. been a minute. It's been a minute. We don't bet I'm, all the time. I'm never wrong. What's on tap? Cat is never wrong. Cat is never wrong. Um, Budweiser, <laughs> king of beers. Yes, I know. People think this is a garbage beer, but I did get to uh, explain. This is kind of. Um, this says. This is brewed and canned in the USA. So this is the, the beer of all beers, America, folks, America. Um, funny story that I want to throw in there. You tell what you, you got your trash beer. <laughs> Come on, I'm, Kelly. I'm drinking a lovely gin and tonic out of my Standing Stone Yeti mug. It's a perfect size. 20 ounces of gin and tonic is <laughs> <laughs> rocking and size. rolling. Um Funny story. This is uh, going to be a long live stream. I got to be prepared. You you are prepared. So uh, just a quick funny. I had a lot of fun with Nikolai here. It was really kind of cool and eye-opening in both directions. Uh, he explained, um, I, I am a bourbon guy, but sometimes you drink a beer. I um, Honestly, what happened is I don't have any beer, bourbon up here, and I got up here, and I was like, beer. I got to go all the way back to the house where I could drink a beer tonight. So beer it is. Um, but 
It's owned by a Belgian company. Well, way to ruin it for us. America. So um, having Nikolai here was very fun. He had the opportunity to experience all things America, and it was very interesting. One of the first things we did was go to the grocery store. We have this extra space, which is what we provided him with while we were gone. We have a a bed over here, and... A There's a, a little and kitchenette a bathroom. and a bath. Yeah, so we had basically everything. It's a mother-in-law suite kind of on our property, yeah, which is cool. Studio apartment, basically. Yeah. Um, so it was great for him to have his own space and us to continue to have ours while he was here. Um, but we stopped at the grocery store. It's like, well, we need to get stuff for you to be able to eat while you're here. And he's like, I have to do things American. I'm like, okay. So he got American cheese. which The worst decision. I was like, I literally would not eat that. And he's like, yeah, but it says America on it. I have to eat the American cheese. I'm like, okay, so there you go, American cheese. And he said peanut butter and jellies seemed very American. And he went for like strawberry jam. And I was like, bro, grape, jelly, (laughs) and peanut butter, if you want to really Americanize this. Um, We went through the bread we went through the bread, and he said literally he was looking for wheat bread, and everything on the shelf would be categorized as white bread in, in Norway. Norway. Yeah, he's like, nothing here is wheat bread. And so we found Dr. J's something something that's got all the seeds on it. It's the fancy bread that you kind of find on the top shelf with dust on the top of it. You know, I was like, here you go. This is as close as we've got to wheat bread. Um, he also was very excited, like, very excited about Gatorade. Yeah. I remember him telling that story. Hey, we saw it and he was like, this is Gatorade. How do you? I was like, yeah, man, it's Gatorade. Said, nope. Again, I don't drink that. And, um, but he's got a buddy that travels to Florida to swim or something, a, a swimming team, something, something. I don't know exactly, but talks about Gatorade. And he was pumped about that. And then, uh, Lay's potato chips, which took us a little while because he couldn't say Lay's properly. So he was like, but we got Lay's potato chips and what else was it? American yeah. food wise. Uh, so then the top things that he said that he thinks of in America would be, uh, big trucks. Oh, because they can't drive big trucks on the highways in Norway. Yeah. There's weight restrictions and width restrictions. So. They've essentially fit small cars, and that's it. But then also barbecue. I said, well, good thing you're in Kansas because barbecue is pretty popular in Kansas. And then uh, the last was guns. (laughs) Yes, guns. So um, I have just a a couple guns. We don't have a a ton of guns, but um, things like pistols. So he got to shoot a pistol. And he got to shoot a, yes, the Midwestern America experience. Yes, that's what I kind of explained. He's like, do all people have guns? Well, kind of in the zone that you are in, there's a good chance that somebody's got a gun (laughs) nearish to you. Um, And barbecue. And probably a big truck. In the Midwest, yeah. But he got to drive a big truck, which he was pumped about. He was like, this truck is way too big for Norway. And uh, then we stopped at a little barbecue place that literally my wallet smelled like barbecue for three days afterward, at least. It might still smell a little bit like barbecue just from walking in. The smoke. And um, he got to shoot an AR-15. I have one AR-15, and it has a, you know... 30 round clip that he went so um very much uh very much the midwestern american experience and he had a blast um it was cool and eye opening and again uh brought to you completely by a connection made through patreon and through social so um it's amazing the amount of reach and it it never ceases to amaze us you know, on how many people we've actually touched with something that we really wanted to provide based on how we started. So here's a little bit just of a small insight into why we create YouTube videos and why we want to help people. Uh, We started with a dog. We've talked about this in previous talks before. 
crazy Sammy. We had no idea what we were doing. We looked for help. There were minimal options, and we struggled. We struggled a lot, and it was one of those things that we were able to reach out and get one-on-one help, but that's not an option for everybody. So having real, valuable resources that show real training sessions is our goal, and that is what we've continued to try to And just uh, overall education. And, yeah. You well, know, the more that we can educate people so that people are asking questions not from a place of ignorance and un- unknowing because you don't know what you don't know. Um, you don't. So, so just definitely from a place of education, not a place of like shaming anyone if they don't know something um, because we've all been there including us, um, you know, oh. it's not like we knew everything to begin with. So look, look back on some of the stuff that we did to begin with. And, uh, it We've was like, this way. is ridiculous. So literally everything that we preach to y'all is speaking from experience only on things not to do and things that we don't recommend, like picking a puppy solely based off of color or looks or different things about training that we say, hey, you really shouldn't do these things. It's because we've already done them, screwed it up, and realized through the school of hard knocks that that was bad and we shouldn't do it again. So um, that's that's it. That's the, the kind of gist of where we were talking that we want, what we wanted to talk about in regards to social. Yeah. And Excited about growth. Yeah. And it, continuing on t- from social to not necessarily social platforms, but we talk about it a lot, um, is some of the events that we get an opportunity to go to and work with our sponsors at. We're going to get to go to Pheasant Fest again this year. Uh, We went last year, and um, it was awesome, and so we're going again this year. We've we've gone quite a few years, but um, there was that lull during COVID where it was like everyone – you know, was stuck in their own homes and couldn't get out. And so it was awesome to get back out and doing some of these shows. And we went to Pheasant Fest last year and we're going again this year. We'll be with DT Systems. So if you are going to make it to Minneapolis to Pheasant Fest and you're like, hey, I want to stop by and see Cat and Ethan. And, um, you know, we're going to bring one of our dogs. Can you guess which one? Yeah, throw it in there. If you've got an idea, who or would request, we bring? Or a request, like a request of who we should bring. Sure, request um, or not, but who do you think we're going to bring to Pheasant Fest this year? Because we already have it decided, folks. I mean, We're pretty set. Mm-hmm. But um, we will be with DT Systems, so you can look them up on the whatever, that map, the map, the, the legend, the whatever, and see where we're at. Um, Omaha. That's where it was. It was Omaha. I was, we, we, we were we couldn't think of it. We were no. like, I was like, it's in Des Moines. South Dakota? No, it was Des not Moines? in Des Moines. It was Omaha, in Omaha. Where yes. it was freezing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um Bring Shock. Take not so puppy shock. Quest. Legacy. Ooh. Clay. Thunder. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Then the lightning. And the thunder. Just, just throwing that out there. Uh, Good let's song. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sing another. No. <laughs> um, so definitely going to be at Pheasant Fest. We'll be hanging out with DT Systems quite a bit. I'm sure we will also stop by the Yukonuba booth and swing by and say hi to Orvis and make some rounds here and there. I don't um, believe Kent's there, but Onyx Maps Onyx should be Maps there. Onyx Maps be there as well. Um, we always say hi and stop by the Novda booth, um, and then just mingle a little bit, but mostly try and hang out at the, the booth that we're at. So I'm guessing shock and quest grit. Ooh, Mm. so many good options. We'll have Mm, to mm, mm. talk about this. So always thunder. Well, thunder's one of my faves. That Mm kind of brings us into our other topic that we wanted to talk about was the um, pheasant fest is in minnesota this year so mm-hmm. it's a great question to throw out here uh, oh, yeah, again yeah. we will be at dt systems booth there will not be a thing in the itinerary that says standing stone kennels this year next year we've got it lined out that it will for sure um, but there's a big booth that we are partnering with dt systems on and uh, we will we will be there to say hi. Let Aiden pick. <laughs> so he'd pick three because that's his mo. Like if they love me, I will pick them. 
Um, you should watch some of our reels on Instagram if you don't know what I'm talking about because he is hilarious. Um, so Pheasant Fest, like Ethan said, is in Minneapolis this year, but it's a big um, outdoor expo, but it's inside. Thank God, especially in February in Minnesota. Um, but a lot of outdoor people, um, companies, things like that. You that need to go to the Woman on the Wing brunch, honey. You tried to last time we were up there, and it I was I know, just and I missed it. So I need to double check and make sure that I can get away for that. Yes, I will hopefully. So not last year I wasn't able to attend. The year before? It's been a minute, but I was at one of them when they had it before COVID, I think. Uh, it was in when it was in Minnesota last year time. That could have been. Mm-hmm. 100% was. So I need to look up the details on that. Sometimes I'm really bad when we go to events, seminars. Get um, sucked in. And we're, I just get sucked at the booth and it's hard to sneak away. And, you know, you kind of get wrapped up into, you know, DT Systems own little booth world and you're like oh there's other things going on other than that and it's hard to get away but I will try and I will double check on scheduling and timing of what those events are um <clears throat> I did want to say speaking of dogs that we're going to potentially be taking to Pheasant Fest because everyone's got their you know hopes and dreams of who we're bringing mm -hmm. and where's that picture I gotta find it hold on Right there. No, no. All right. No. I don't know what you're looking for, I guess. The Altasaur. There it is. There we go. Aha. So, speaking of what dogs we're going to be able to bring to Pheasant Fest, have you all seen that picture that we posted on social media? <laughs> stop. 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 Uh, that's horrible. Well, we don't have Charles here doing our switchy thing. Yeah, I know. Bye, Charles in Texas. Um, so we have a lot of our personal dogs in South Texas doing a bunch of quail hunting. Grab that mug real quick. We're up quite a few new people. So if you just joined us, Bird Dog Bingo is pinned at the top. If you're a patron... Um, you can play. If you get a bingo, you get the opportunity to win this mug this evening. It says Standing Stone Born to Hunt on it. Yeti mug. Cup. Excuse me. Tumblr. I keep saying mug. I'm an idiot. Yeah. Uh, you are. It's fine. It's definitely a tumbler, not a mug. <laughs> yep. Yep, it is. Anyway, back to this really amazing, awesome photo. That Go Charlie to social took. media, Instagram, Facebook. You'll get to see it. But um, Charles took it while he was down in Texas. He's been doing all the guiding of our steady dogs down there. He went down in November. He'll be back in March. And so people are requesting that we bring Thunder or Quest or Grit or... Um, uh, someone said muddy. Muddy. <clears throat> they are all in South Texas, so they will not they're be able working, to, folks. They're working, and they are not going to be able to make it to Pheasant Fest for a nice vacation. So it will be one of the quote unquote young dogs that um, isn't ready for this level of steadiness hunting in <laughs> Texas that will be with us in Pheasant Fest. So, um, but one of the questions, well, the post itself when Ethan posted it is. Do you know who all the dogs are? And there were a lot of guesses. There were some people that picked out one specific dog that they were like, I know which dog this is. Nobody got it right. But nobody had 100% right. So I thought it would be kind of cool to tell you who is who. So um, unfortunately, like I said, we don't have somebody cool clicking up a picture up on the, the screen. So you're going to have to go to social media to look. And I'm going to do left to right, and I'm going to do the one half of the photo first, and then I'm going to move over to the other half of the photo. So on the first half of the photo, from left to right, we have Allie, which is a snap shooter puppy. Um, a lot of people were like, that's got to be shooter. I'm like, well, 
you're half right. I mean, it's a snap shooter puppy. And Allie looks very masculine and perky in that picture. She's got a really big head, which is she something that so shooter, much like her daddy. shooter throws that into his puppies for sure. Um, and then right next to her is old Nixie boy. He is going to be 12 in March. He's probably going to end up celebrating his birthday down in Texas. Um, and he's an old dude. Uh, he is representing his normal MO of not looking at the camera. Uh, top or bottom row? Top row. Top row. Top row. Sitting on the bench. Um, on the bench so Nicks are there in the top middle row of the bench. Um, he is doing his MO of not looking at the camera. Uh, getting him to look at the camera has become a feat, a uh, pretty good miracle if you can you get, get him to get a camera actually... out, he will not look at you, Yeah, period. he's like, camera, won't look. No, he, yeah. he sucks at that. Yeah. And then next or to Or he's n- really good at not <laughs> looking at the camera, however you want to look yeah, at it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, then next to Nick's is Grit, so that is Muddy's mama. And then if you look left to right again below the bench, so left in the blue collar is Piper. That's a girl. Just saying. Even though she's wearing a blue collar. Yep. Definitely a girl. Mm -hmm. Yep. She's a big girl. And then next to Piper on the bottom is Quest looking all stoic and regal and head back. That's how she does everything. Sorry. I keep hitting the microphone. Very serious. And then if you look in the middle... By the door, we got a whole bunch of cockadoos. So our little English cockers and thunder front and center. So this cocker here. Yeah. Who is that, honey? I never met these cockers. We got to borrow these cockers. Yeah, that's catch. That's catch. And the one next to catch is Banks. Mm -hmm. And these two cockers, we were lucky enough to be able to borrow for a few months from Aaliyah from Banks backwater and uh we have needed these little oh yeah they're cockers. fantastic yeah um and then next to thunder is cruzy which so thunder's dead center in the middle because he is the king of the ranch's favorite dog yep he is the favorite down there um and then there's cruz and rue oh somebody has a bingo <gasps> A bingo bango. Rock and roll. So Cruz, though, I have to say, he is also... Ancient. 12 years old. Same age as Nixer. Uh, we got both of those two little duders about the same time. I think Cruz is actually just a tish older than Okay, Nix. so uh, it's a new product review. Onyx Maps, Thunderbutt, Questy Pop, Kent Ammo. I don't believe What's we have talked about review? Kent Ammo or a new product review. Well, we review. talked about them about at Pheasant Fest. But oh, I don't know about the new product review. No new product review, to my knowledge, has been spoke yet. Unless we missed something and forgot about it, and then you can just say, you talked about this, and then I'll yeah, be like, Yeah, let oh. us know, because I don't think so. Um, That's the only one that I see that thinks that they have a bingo yet. There's several that are really, really close. So close. So Let's close, but yet happens. so far. Okay. Continue. Um, so then, Please. like I said, <clears throat> Cruzy, he's actually just a little bit older than Nix because he was mm, yeah, a puppy Me. alive and well down when you were guiding your first season in Texas. Not first. And no, no, no. Last. Oh, so he's younger than Nix? No. Last. Yeah, la, la, last. But he was actually born where Nix was born at the end of that last season. Correct. So he's older. Cruzy is just a few months older. So he's already 12. Mm-hmm. Gotta be. Just just over. Yeah. And then there's Rue, who is a new cocker to oh, the team. Cruiser was uh, born in a dog box. In Texas. Yeah, the guy that owned his mother Two thought... Didn't know she, she was keeps pregnant. She putting weight on. I don't know. I just keep cutting her food back. And then she happened to hunt about 20, 30 minutes. And he put her up to switch dogs. And he came back. There was a puppy. That was Cruz. <laughs> and then uh, he left her there for the, to finish out the hunt, and she had her second puppy. That was, uh, I don't know what he called that dog, but there were two. That was it. Yeah, a female and a male, but I don't know what the female was. Yep. But let's move on to the right side of that photo on the bench from left to right. We got Muddy in the pink collar on top. She's also a pretty big girl. She is a Grit Vex daughter. And then we got Timber, 
who looks very serious, kind of like her mama. That is a also snap shooter puppy from another litter. So look, she is a sister from another litter to Timber. All right, so somebody else said they think they have a bingo. This says random movie or song reference. I was singing something. I don't know what I was singing, but I was singing something. Do you remember? Oh, yeah, 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 in the beginning. Yep. Yep. Okay, I don't know what so I was that singing, was there. but I was singing. Um, someone's location gets, yep, definitely, totally did possibly, that. Instagram, Facebook reference, yep. bingo, false alarm. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Patreon. Patreon. Definitely. This winner, one winner, is chicken a, dinner. a bingo. So if you have what you think is a bingo card, plop your number out there. Uh, I should say hashtag something at the top of your card. Throw that in there, and we will know who is the winner of the cup tonight. The tumbler. Excuse me. The tumbler. All right. Good to go. And then next to Timber is Arrow. And Arrow is not from the Standing Stone Kennels, but she is owned by Charles and Annie with Honor Point Kennels. Mm -hmm. And then if you look... And the only versatile champion in this picture. I'm going to throw Touché. that one out there. She is. You're right. You're right. And then there is on the bottom right-hand picture from left to right, we got Breezy Babe. She is a Maggie daughter. And then next to Breezy is Mako, which is out of timber. So lots of related doggies on these benches, if you will. But kind of a cool photo, a really cool photo of a bunch of obedient bird dogs sitting pretty and uh, representing South Texas quail hunting at the El Tesoro Ranch. Which people have asked us a couple times since we've posted that. Do we have a South Texas location? Is you know that our headquarters? Things Can like that. Can you come hunt there? And Great it, questions. And those are good questions. But it is a private ranch, and this is a private kennel for our personal and some of Charles and Annie's personal dogs um, to be housed while they are down there guiding these private hunts in South Texas. Steady to wing shot and fall. Pretty pretty awesome setup. Uh, really cool. Uh, Charles has sent us some videos. Ethan's actually going down there this week. Um, he leaves tomorrow morning, bright and early, to go down do a little hog hunting out of a helicopter, which is crazy. Um, I still <laughs> made chicken out. I don't know. I it's... chickened out, and I stayed home. <laughs> I'm, I'm staying home. Uh, but then also doing some quail hunting with our dogs um, and getting to see them work. But We've seen a few little video clips and of the dogs working, and they're really doing a good job. Very impressive. Like I said, hunting steady. Then these little cockers go in and blow up these quail in front of them, uh, and these coveys are getting bang, bang, banged, and then waiting for these dogs to make retrieves, and it's pretty cool stuff. It's very cool. It's an awesome. Uh, it's an awesome relationship, an awesome partnership, basically on developing dogs for. For a cool ranch and some really cool people. So it's uh, it's definitely, <laughs> it's uh, it's been a lot of fun to work with those guys. Now, uh, tag J, 100%. All you need to do on Patreon, just send me a message, and we will get you with your address, and we'll get that shipped out to you. All right? That's so awesome. The Thank you guys for playing. The bingo is done for Sometimes the Sometimes we haven't had a bingo, mm -hmm. so it's awesome that we got one tonight. It's been a minute since we've gotten somebody to bingo. Now, we are, I think that's pretty much it, ready to roll into some questions here. We had mm -hmm. some super chats. Let's pull. Let's, how do you get to those? That uh, well, there is one way over here, which is that. Okay. If I can fix that real quick. Um, there was another one I thought, There were though. two, yeah. It's not showing them, though, so let's go to... Scroll, baby, scroll. There you scroll. Your oh, eyes. There work. it is. There. there it is. Hello from Florida. Thank you for this super chat. Rifleman 1988. We appreciate it. Actually, I have birds in Florida right now. They are in the final stages mm -hmm. of prepping for races and they're doing fantastico. Wonderful. 
Farmer11 also had a super chat. Tips for shed dog training and pheasant hunting. Okay, so I would say first and foremost, shed dog training is an interesting thing to teach dogs. It requires two things, one of which is a, and the most important, a dog that is very, very, very driven to retrieve. Uh, and why? Because sheds are not exciting. They don't move. They don't jump. They don't run. They don't flap around. They do nothing. All right? So when we talk about teaching dogs to retrieve sheds, they have minimal scent, but they are visually able to be picked out pretty easy by dogs because they're white in a darker background. Dogs find contrast very easily. Now, the key to the whole situation, though, is that they struggle from the fact, the average dog's going to struggle from the fact that they don't do anything. So they get boring or are definitely less important than if you happen to encounter birds in your walk. Um, key things that we do, and you can find all of this stuff at standingstonesupply.com, would be utilize the dog bone training method that has a rubber antler. So it allows you to play fetch with an antler colored and shaped object um, and build a really exciting, fun game out of the process and then introduce scent to that. Uh, they also have a product made with all of the parts essentially that involve scent, which comes from what's called the wax ring, which is a small amount of skin, hair, and blood that surrounds the outside of the um, crown of the horn when they drop the antlers. So that wax ring, um, shoot, I don't know, 10,000 wax rings are collected to build uh, one bottle of scent. That's a totally made-up number, but there's very minimal there. So if you open a bottle of it and try and smell it, it's like, I smell nothing. But dogs definitely do pick up on it, and that is the smells that they're looking for. So you um, first build drive and desire around the sight category with a safe object, which is why we don't play fetch with antlers because they run up to grab it, <coughs> stab themselves with a tine. Um, the rubber antler is drastically safer, but teaches them what it looks like from a shape and basically visual recognition standpoint. They also learn how to pick them up because when they're flopping around, being rubber, um, poke them in the eye or they're just hard to hold on. So they learn how to kind of roll them over and grab them close to the base and it, it makes the whole process easier. So that aspect of things is good. Then um, once you have the sight portion down, you add the scent, then you have scent recognition down, then you switch over to the hard antler category and then start looking for them in the field. And that is the ticket. That's it. But all of this is only made possible if you have a dog that is very, very, very driven to retrieve. Even some of our strongest driven to retrieve dogs I've tried to teach this to, and they run into a pheasant when we go out to look for actual sheds in a uh, river bottom or wherever we're going to look. And it's kind of like their mind is blown for the day in the direction of shed hunting. So definitely not the top tier if that's your only goal cool but you also mentioned pheasant hunting in the question so you're going to be fighting against what comes naturally to the dogs which would be birds and bird drive um, don't be discouraged by that just keep it fun and build drive around sheds good answer thanks so this is a question from dave mckenna i think we need a little more information though um, cause he says, I have a question about transitioning my young lab from upland birds and ducks to large geese. We are shooting now. Cool. Um, you need a little more information, but at the same time, I would say less, less information is really okay. Uh, if you're making that transition to big geese, the key is to understand that you cannot force a dog on geese very well and or successfully. successfully. Um, just keep shooting them and encourage the dog. They're going to have fun. Eventually, they may even come to the point of, quote unquote, hating geese and excited about running them down, tackling them and killing them and bringing them back to you. So that becomes a big draw for the dog itself. Just keep shooting them. 
they'll either figure it out or they won't. And we can talk about after the season is over how we can improve that. But ultimately, it takes drive and desire. And that is just a fun game of running down, wreaking havoc on geese running across the field. Once they get a little taste of that, they'll have a blast. Hey, Michaela, we will see you and Boone and maybe Zach. Uh, maybe all y'all will be up here on Sunday dropping him off. We're excited Perfect. to work with him as well. Caleb said uh, they're great mugs. He called them mugs, too. Uh, and he uses his every day from the last bingo. Dirty dog. So I guess you can call them mugs. It's been verified, but they're tumblers. According to Yeti, they're tumblers and cat. <coughs> and me. I just called them the wrong thing. So we have a next question says. Need a. Oh, sorry. sorry. Too far. We need a shed dog training series. Ah. It's probably not something that's in our wheelhouse or in the cards for. Takes a lot of time to train for. Um, an extended amount of time. And honestly, we prefer to hunt our dogs on upland games. So we're developing our personal puppies to be upland hunting dogs. I'll probably do it, but don't hold your breath, okay? It's <laughs> going to be a while. Okay. Yeah, definitely don't hold your breath. Oh, um, my nine-week-old puppy, lab puppy, would make you proud with your free YouTube videos. Heck yeah. Love it. Love it. Absolutely. We are actually in the process, too, just so you know, of finishing up our uh, retriever and flusher step-by-step -step training course. So the training course that we have now is primarily upland versatile hunting based and in the process of finishing up more of a retriever flusher um, series. So that'll be out on our online standing stone supply slash courses place soon. Beers made, bottled, owned by a Belgian company. It says, you need some mid-winter's night dram, high west. I'm going to tell you right now, I have literally never found that on a shelf or anywhere, anytime, ever, but I've heard that it is fantastic. So, Would your training program be good for all pointers? Just curious. I'm going to be picking up my German wire hair pointer in a month and a half. Yes, absolutely. So it's a versatile hunting dog training step-by-step -step plan um, can be used for any dogs that have pointing instincts. Um, so you could use it for setters, English pointers, German short hair pointers, wire hairs, griffons, drothars, DKs, pointing labs, if you will. I mean, all the things. So definitely can be utilized for any pointing breed. So, next question here says, I'm looking for a kennel for my fully grown GSP. What do you recommend? This kind of depends on what you are needing to use the kennel for. Mm -hmm. So, around our house, we utilize Rufflin kennels. Um, they are lightweight. They're durable. They last and are easy to stack and clean and all of the wonderful things. Um, with our dogs, we utilize their large size and that fits... Anywhere from a 45-pound dog having a God's plenty of room to our bigger dogs in the 60-plus pound range. Um, and then if you're looking more from a traveling standpoint, I would recommend checking out a gunner. We have them on our website, standingstonesupply.com. The gunners are the cat's meow for protection for your dog, especially if they're not riding in the cab of your vehicle. Yeah. Um, all of that being said, for travel purposes, the average full-sized short hair should ride in an intermediate that's tighter. It's a little bit smaller. It's going to keep them in the position of more down, laying down, curled up aspect of things. And that portion of things is going to be um, safer all the way around. So intermediate would be what I would travel with. Large is what we give them a little extra room in. So we have a super chat that just popped in and says... Okay. Click the, uh, there you go. If I click that, will it take uh, me to it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, should we break up our chihuahuas and GSP puppy when the GSP is trying to play with them? The chihuahuas tend to growl at him, and we're not sure they're playing. They dislike him pawing at them. Cool. So, 
Um, this goes hand in hand with both big dogs and little dogs from a respect of essentially how do we help the new interaction of dogs, right? Um, it happens all the time that you try and introduce a new dog and they don't necessarily fit perfectly. And especially older dogs accepting a new puppy who's a total turd, which is just the name of the game for puppies. Our ultimate goal is advocating for both. So if it looks like your short hair puppy is, it's a GSP, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Short hair puppy is picking essentially and or over bothering the chihuahuas or older dogs in general, just the dog that's there. If they're just pestering, 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 you need to step in and say, puppy, stop. Excuse me. Puppy, stop. And at the same time, I like say advocating for both. You need to be able to step into your older dogs, chihuahuas or Great Danes for that matter, and say, hey, you need to not be a jerk and you need to be a little bit more accepting and I will help to um, essentially mitigate this whole interaction. And, and there are some pushback that you're going to get from different people that we've gotten from different people. Of, oh, you're not always around. You just need to let dogs be dogs. Well, it's a really, really good chance that dogs being dogs is going to end up with some level of a vet visit because dogs being dogs, normal communication would be you haven't listened on the first time or the second time, so now we're in a fight, all Especially right? Especially with the size discrepancy between a short hair, Absolutely. even a puppy that's a short hair, and a chihuahua. Um, definitely don't want any injuries. Um, and so I just got to watch um, one of our puppy buyers got a puppy from us, and they also have a another dog from us that they got as a puppy, but it's been a few years. And so they videoed the puppy meeting the new dog or the puppy meeting the older dog. Um, so the adult dogs interaction. And I was like, that is awesome. Um, they had the older dog placed on a dog bed, which obviously that older dog has a ton of obedience training and understands staying on a dog bed. And then the puppy got to go up and meet her and just watching that interaction when the puppy was a little unsure of this bigger dog and the energy level that a short hair dog has um, and she would back off, then the other adult dog would have to stay on their dog bed until the puppy was comfortable approaching. So the same thing can be done even if there isn't that same level of obedience with the other dog, the older dog that's being introduced, whether it's a chihuahua, another short hair, whatever, it does not matter. Um, and then the young dog. So if you don't have that level of control and obedience over either of the dogs, um, but you're trying to help control the interaction, advocate for both dogs, tethering them. So clipping each of them to a long leash, uh, check cord, whatnot is going to help you have a little more control. And if the short hair puppy is getting too exuberant with the chihuahuas. You can pull them away. Um, if the chihuahuas are getting too growly and being like, hey, I'm going to get after you, puppy, you can pull them away and you can advocate for both um, so that you can help control the situation and teach them proper interactions, which is so, so important. We get we get quite a few dogs in for training that are, you know, six months, nine months, 10 months old that um, are very friendly dogs. They really are, but they don't know how to properly interact with other dogs. All they want to do is play and they overplay and they play with dogs in a sense that those older dogs or those dogs that don't want to play that way are feeling, um, you know, pressured to respond in some way. And we don't want that response to be in a negative way where they're growling or biting or snapping or, you know, just being afraid of this dog that's not being aggressive, but is overplaying and playing inappropriately. So teaching dogs how to interact appropriately, play together appropriately, respect another dog's body language is important without letting them necessarily, um, what you were saying, like, growling at them, putting them in their place, that type of thing. We don't want the dogs to do that to each other to, to you know, control the situation. We want to be that, that control of the situation. 
You weren't Absolutely. listening to anything I was saying. It's fine. No, I was listening to part of it, but I was also <laughs> reading the next portion because I exactly because you were looking have. at me with a blank stare when I was like, "What you were saying?" And you're like, "I have no idea what I was you're just talking about also, or what I was saying." No, it, I clicked to the fact that I looked over at you and saw that this says "road" on the side <laughs> of this. Right? No, no, no. Listen, Road is a Norwegian company, and Roda, Roda is how they pronounce it, not Road. <laughs> I know. Stupid, right? Okay, next question. It says, um, do you guys have an upland hunting training program where dogs get sent to you? Yes. We do train dogs for people at our facility, long-term board and trains. Um, typically, it is for three to four months of training, depending on your goals. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh. <laughs> next question. Any tips on how I can get my dog to recall better? She's always running off, and it's difficult running after her, and she's getting faster day by day. So, um, really interesting thing. We talk about there are three steps in training a dog, okay? So, first and foremost, we teach. Teaching happens essentially in two steps. No, pretty much one step. We use positive reinforcement, Okay. Working for meals is important, but we utilize a clicker to mark behaviors. You would teach targeting and then apply a cue of here. Once you have that done, we move into stage two of the training process. This is differentiate, and differentiate has two parts. Differentiating between cues is important, so being able to say here, good, and then sit and whoa, and kennel, and all of these wonderful different things all in one session, and the dog being able to differentiate between the cues coming out of your mouth and exhibiting the behavior properly. The next is that you would differentiate between the locations in which you train. Dogs are placed and situationally oriented, so that being said, they get comfortable in certain areas. You need to move the areas around and utilize the meal time frame as a really good way to kind of bridge that gap of I'm focused for this new environment in this new situation. Lastly, we move into the third category of proofing. Proofing involves collar conditioning, and ultimately collar conditioning is going to be the key to super consistent results or responses to what you're asking. Now, if you haven't made it through steps one, two, and three, you shouldn't have expectations to be 100% obedient in uncontrolled environments. So I'm going to take you out. You're running away from me. You shouldn't even have the opportunity to run away in an uncontrolled environment. So have your puppy drag a check cord or a long line. We have a really cool product called a check cord, but it's made out of our easy lead material, and that's super... Um, durable as well as not hard on your hands from a rope burn standpoint and it holds up and it cleans up and it's uh, put together with all stainless material it's amazing so check those out but that is the ticket as far as how do you get your dog to not run away from you or be consistent about it coming back to you Rocco Del Medico said is that Texas hunt the one that Bob Owens is going on Actually, no. no, but Bob is going with us goose hunting. He must be excited if you guys know about it. <laughs> but um, he actually went to Texas and duck he hunted did. with a buddy Ice of ours, course. Peter, yeah, um, mutual friend uh, who has Sam from Bob. Yep. And so we're all going goose hunting. We are. Wyoming, Nebraska, we leave right around Sunday. There. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. After puppy send home, hitting the road. We got a litter going home on Sunday, and then we are headed out to go goose hunting. And by so. hitting the road, that means Peter is driving, and I. I hope he knows that. I hope he knows that. And he likes and to Bob drive. is flying out to meet us. Yeah, he likes to drive though. Yeah. Yeah. Um. What do we got? Devin Mendenhall said, what do you think about the step-by-step, -step, even if my puppy is already five months old? Mm. I still think it's a really great um, training step-by-step -step program. And people ask that a lot is like, well, I have an older dog or an older puppy. Where should I start? 
And that's the great thing about the course is there is actually a supporting document that's got a checklist, which allows you to review, you know, what your puppy should approximately know at what age, or if they were following this step-by-step program. And you can go through and you can check off, well, my five-month-old puppy knows this, this, and this. And then you can go, ooh, there's a couple holes in this program that my puppy doesn't know. Mm-hmm. I need to backtrack and go over that. Make sure those behaviors are solid before moving on. Um, and it still gives great direction. Um, I think that you would still be very happy with following along with it. Um, you scrolled. Right there. Kelly, we're always raising puppies. Always raising puppies. Somebody thought we were going to bring Hex to Pheasant Fest. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Back I mean, at, he would do fine. It would be good for him, for sure. Um, he would learn a lot. He is collar conditioned to stay on a dog bed. We have been proofing that. He would get a lot more proofing and a lot more work on that. Um, he is also under six months old, so his mental like fortitude in a sense of like being able to handle that level of distraction and attention and would be a lot for him. And he would probably be done after the first day and not mentally ready to handle another day of pheasant fest. And unfortunately, because we have to drive all the way from Kansas to Minneapolis, we can't bring a trailer full of dogs. So we have to pick one and only one dog to come with us um, to basically be able to be mentally ready and um, able to handle that level of distraction and obedience um, through the whole show. Uh, we've got time for one more quick one here, and this is just related to DT products. We've got Rocco said uh, DT MR1100 isn't working beyond 50 yards. It's only about one year old. I'm guessing it's an issue with the collar, not the transmitter. Do you know if this is something that can be repaired? The answer is always yes, it can be repaired. And most likely, uh, Rocco, it's probably still under warranty because DT does a great job taking care of stuff. Um, just shoot us a message or give me a call and we'll get that taken care of for you. So these were great questions and I love answering them. And I was talking to Ethan before we got on the live stream tonight. And I was like, I am so excited to do a live stream. It has been probably close to a month since I've been on one between Ethan traveling and us not doing them. And then Nikolai being here and you guys getting to do your live stream together. And I was like, I'm so excited to be on a live stream with everyone tonight. So and get to interact and answer questions and chit chat. Makes All me righty, happy. Fine. Answer one more question. Um, yeah, one right there. What do you think about Garmin devices? Now, Garmin, <laughs> unless you're looking for a tracking unit, then we sell those. So coming to a website near you. Um, as far as e-collar units, though, I really am not happy with them uh, because of the very low levels of stimulation, how they work. They're usually hotter on the bottom end and... Then on top of that, most of their units, you have to actually switch to a different switch to be able to utilize Vibrate so you can't get Vibrate and Nick and continue stimulation all at the same time. Which is I like a button for use. Vibrate, a, bite, a button for continuous, and a button for the momentary stimulation. Absolutely. I don't want to have to change a dial to get from Vibrate to a level of stimulation because y- I want to be able to switch between Vibrate and stimulation with literally a press of a button. Boom, boom. I'm switched. Timing is so important. So So, fast. So fast. I want it to be very, very fast. Super fast. All right. Last one says, uh, do you use crate pads for puppies? Want to prevent calluses, but don't want to create bad biting, chewing habits. Um, It's interesting. So this is one of those things that falls into the category of depends on your dog. We typically and the put, age of your dog, I yep. would say as well. Yep. So with brand new puppies, we typically put towels in their crate. These towels last right up until the point that the dog either falls into the category of we're struggling with consistency of pottying. So it's like there's always a little potty spot on the towel or they start chewing them up and destroying them. And eating little pieces of them. Yes. So... Both are options that it's important to pay really close attention to. 
Um, and you have to kind of mix things up. It's, it's just a sense of if you have a dog that is struggling essentially with every night it's a potty accident whether they whine or not, or you do have, um, you know, kind of those situations where you're finding towels that are shredded, um, you've got to make some adjustments. So outside of that, having some form of pad is ideal. But I will say our our general mantra is can be destroyed, will be destroyed. So you need to pay very close attention. Anything, excuse me, I'm we're just beating on the microphones tonight. Um, just about anything that we've put in kennels that have the ability to be destroyed will be destroyed, just like we said before. So you just have to watch. I would love the opportunity to put a five-star pillow top mattress in every crate we own, uh, but it's unrealistic and unsafe for the average dog. So I get what you're, where you're coming from from a callous standpoint, but the likelihood of your dog spending enough time in a crate itself, being a family dog, which I'm assuming this is an assumption, but being a family dog, part of your house and everything else, them spending enough time in a crate to actually get calluses is highly unlikely. So I would say on average, start with some towels. If it becomes a problem, remove them and it's okay for them to spend a few hours on just plain plastic if that is necessary. You got anything else to add? Mm, I I mean, I get what you're saying about like the little like hot spot elbow callus spots and things like that and yeah for sure soft bedding is going to be the key to that whether um that is a dog bed in the house um the couch in the house um but also if your dog is old enough and or non-destructive enough that you can put a pad in their kennel and then in their crate and they're not gonna chew it up destroy it and pee on it then absolutely give them something soft but um we have had uh too many situations that dogs destroy their bedding, eat parts of it, have potential bowel obstructions from that, that um, dogs have to really prove to us that they are going to be responsible puppies to have those type of things in their crate before we are going to give them those. Otherwise, you know, they do have to be crated without and then like um, we try and do with all of our dogs, they get plenty of time in the house on soft dog beds um, or in bed with us, depending on their age, so that they don't have to be on a hard crate surface all the time. Um, and we're lucky enough that when we don't have that opportunity, the dogs do get dog beds um, in their kennel runs in the kennel um, because we're constantly rotating a few dogs into the house and a few dogs in the kennel at a time, depending on where they're at in training and things like that. So, all righty, folks, that's all the time we have for this evening. Thank you very much for the questions. Thanks for being here with us. If we missed your question, please don't hesitate to reach out at Standing Stone Kennels uh, Patreon page, which is patreon.com slash standing stone kennels. I wondered where you're going with that. There we wah, go. wah, wah. Thanks for calling me out on that one. Um, all of those things being said, we love y'all. We love being here and we will see you in the next live. All of that's advertised on our social platforms and we do. Post and our them. newsletter. Yes, we do try and post them in a newsletter. If you aren't on those at all, uh, enjoy it when you sign up at standingstonekennels.com. Enjoy, enjoy it after you sign up. <laughs> Definitely after. Uh, good night, y'all. That's what we got.